Right, hello and welcome to My Favourite Game. Uh, this is my podcast, uh, I'm Tom Rouse, and over the next few weeks I'm going to be talking to some of my favourite YouTubers and friends all about the game of football, our favourite game, uh, talking about their favourite memories and their hopes for their clubs as well as finding out their story on YouTube. Uh, today's guest is one of my favourite football manager YouTubers with nearly 40,000 subscribers and over 8.5 million views. Paul Holden, or Golden FM, is one of the reasons why I got into YouTube myself. About two years ago, uh, I had a bad foot and I spent the half term that we're in now uh, just sitting and watching his videos. It's very entertaining, very engaging, and his experiments have really, really captured my imagination and he's genuinely one of the reasons why i got into youtube myself i feel like there should be some sort of steve wright round of applause you're going to make me blush (laughs) (laughs) it's lovely to hear i must say tom thank you yeah thank you for inviting me on oh thank you very much for coming on um the first question i want to ask you is to do with your football supporting uh who you support and the story behind that because i have heard it before but I'd like you to tell my listeners again. Yeah, sure. Well, I support West Ham. <laughs> and, for your sins. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Couple, well, the main reason, actually, um, I, I don't come from a footballing family at all. None of my family are interested in football. I grew up in Chelmsford, which is about 30 minutes from East London. So mm. I'm not too far away. But uh, it was actually a friend in year two that got me into West Ham. My mm. best friend in year two, who I'm no longer in contact with at all. But uh, he's the one that actually got me in, interested in West Ham uh-huh. and stuck with them ever since, really. And it was kind of fortunate that they were a local team as well, because a lot of my friends back then kind of supported Man United, the Glory mm. Hunters, quite predictably so, I suppose. Um, yeah. I think it, one of the reasons is, firstly, they were really popular and really successful. Uh, but secondly, being brought up in the middle of Essex, there wasn't really many big teams around I suppose mm. it's Colchester United and South End which are obviously yeah. lower league teams and West Ham were actually the closest big team so fortunately I ended up supporting them oh great so uh, have you have you had the chance to go to many games and stuff in uh, your time supporting them yeah a few not as many as as I wanted because growing up I wasn't from a footballing family so I didn't yeah. have my dad interested in football so there was not yeah. really anyone to take me but in later years I did I've uh, been to a few games since I moved to the London Stadium, not masses, mm. um, but I've never actually seen us lose there, so I should probably go well, to more. I, yeah, I think they should buy me a ticket. season ticket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you make of the move then from Upton Park to uh, to the Olympic Stadium? Initially, I thought it was good, just mm. like a lot of supporters probably. You were sold the dream. Yeah, more, more than it. half of the supporters probably thought it was good by the time we did move. Mm. Um, we were sold this dream, I suppose, and and being you know a huge stadium, and the opportunity to compete with everyone. Um, but I don't. The thing is, nowadays you don't need a big stadium to compete because of all the TV no. money. You know, you don't need a massive stadium to to generate revenue. It's all about the TV mm. money. So one day teams will probably be able to just forget about that stadium and not worry mm. about it. Um, even though it is beneficial because it builds a great atmosphere and obviously having more fans, it just enables you to to build a good brand. And, and, and <laughs> yeah, I, I think just having a, it just gives you you more, I'm trying to think of the word really, but it just... <laughs> well, everything, since, the, well, when the move was on the cards and the way you were playing at the, se- the last season of Upton Park, it looked as if, right, this is going to become a massive club now because they're going into the London mm. Stadium. You've got London on your badge. It, this Within two years, these should be really knocking on the door of the top four and being being a top team. But Yeah, but sta- I, a big stadium I, doesn't mean that. That's, no, that's no, what I'm it getting at, really. But. No, but, it, but all the branding and everything like that behind it as well, it's, it was perfect it, on paper, yeah. but it just seems as if the at board level... The board are it's just a mess. They're just... They're yeah. just well, David, David Sullivan in particular, just he doesn't know when to shut up. He's always spouting stuff, stuff on social media through his son or through mm. newspapers and tipping journalists off and getting them to reveal things and then blaming managers for things that he's done or blaming mm. other members of staff for things he's done. And he, he just uses everyone as a scapegoat. Mm. They, they've done some good. Uh, they, they saved the club, I think, initially when they bought, bought the club. But since then... 
they've just been so controversial. It's just yeah. every week you just expect something stupid to come out <laughs> about the club, something embarrassing. Like yeah. I remember reading about like the history of West Ham and how in in the old days people who weren't West Ham supporters often saw West Ham as their second club mm. because of the way we played attractive football and yeah. did well in cup competitions and obviously produced some good England players in the 60s in particular. Mm. So people, neutrals enjoyed West Ham. Now yeah. we're just seen as a joke by a lot of supporters, I think. Yeah, um, that's, I, th- I think this, this West Ham way and 66 in a way has really put the pressure on the club mm. For the future, because they are never going to be able to ma- match that level of success. Yeah, but having uh, said that, although we've had some terrible, boring managers recently, like Allardyce and Moyes, mm. Pellegrini coming in, I'm feeling really positive. I wasn't mm. at the end of last season. I was feeling. I, I I kind of got to the end of the season and kind of gave up following mm. them. If that yeah. I mean that sounds bad, yeah. but it just no, the, I, the, the I, way I, it I was. It just I couldn't yeah. be bothered to be depressed about it. Yeah. So you kind of just sort of give up and think, oh, well, if we survive, we survive. If we go down, we go down. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, we survived. But I wasn't feeling positive at all, especially with our board. Yeah. However, Pe- Pellegrini coming in, and it seems like they're going to give him full reins of the transfer for transfers, and also they're going to bring in a director of football that he likes from Malaga, mm. by the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling positive because he plays attacking football. He knows, uh, at the end of the day, football is an entertainment business. Mm. What's the point in watching a boring game where you scrape a one 0 win? Yeah, I'd rather watch a five four defeat if I'm honest, because <laughs> you want to be entertained. Because uh, that's why that's what I get so bored of. I mean, I got bored of watching England. I just oh, gave yeah. up watching yeah. England because yeah. it was just so boring. I just couldn't be bothered. What, why would I spend ninety minutes of my life watching that? Yeah, to be honest, I've always been someone that prefers to play football manager over watching <laughs> real football. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with West Ham, it got to that point where it's just so boring. Mm. I want to be entertained, and I think that's what West, what West Ham fans want. All they want is to be entertained. They, yeah. they expect entertaining football, which is why they've really got on Allardyce's back mm. and Moyes' back recently as well. I mean, he did a really good job keeping us up. I admit that, but yeah. f- for the future, we need someone who is willing to play attacking football and bring some pacey flair players to the yeah. club. Well again on paper you've got you've got a good manager and you've and the the, the board have said the right things but whether or not that actually happens is yeah, another we'll thing see. We'll, we'll wait and see. I'm, yeah. I'm hopeful. We're always hopeful though. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've, you've just mentioned it there uh, about England. The World Cup coming up this summer now. You've done quite a few uh, little se- mini series on your channel of very smaller teams. Uh have you, you haven't done an England one yet, have you? Are you planning on doing an uh, England one? Probably not. I've been doing underdog nations. So <laughs> well, I've managed... <laughs> could you do England? <laughs> well, technically I could, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's quite a few other football managers, YouTubers, that I think are doing England. Yeah. So I've decided yeah. not to. And I've managed England a few times in the past and football manager yeah. anyway, so I'd rather not. <laughs> how, how would you rate their chances uh, this summer then? Uh, poor. Yeah? I just... I don't know. Uh, we're we're going to lose against Belgium, I think. Yeah. That well, that's the pivotal game, isn't it? Because you have um, to imagine that both teams will yeah. beat Panama, and yeah. it's whoever scores the most goals against we them. We should theoretically thrash Panama, yeah. and we should beat Tunisia, but yeah. it's England. So yeah, we've we've seen <laughs> it before. <laughs> no. And yeah. I actually managed Panama on Football Manager, and I managed to beat England two 0 and oh, England wow. literally did nothing in the match. Yeah. It was, I don't know whether that's me being a tactical genius or, or, any, or England being England. It's probably a mix. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anybody then from your from your saves that you think right we need to look out for genuinely in real life because they've got some really dark horse like players? What sort of young English players? No, no, it's a, the the other nations. Oh just right, to, the, the uh, managed. with Panama, I don't know anything about Tunisia to be honest. No. Uh, do you know any players that play for Tunisia? Uh, not off the top of my head. No. I think there's one that I. Uh, mentioned recently but I've forgotten his name now <laughs> with with um, Panama they've got a 36 year old forward what? I'm not sure how it's pronounced because I was pronouncing it Tejeda but then everyone with Spanish origins Correct, was yeah. saying that it was Tejeda or something like that mm. um, I'm terrible at pronunciations <laughs> mm. um, but yes it's pron- it's spelled T-E-J-E-D-A I think right. and he's been in the Panama setup for a long time um, and 
there's Roman Torres, who's their centre back. He's like a film. He's, he's basically a well. He's a celebrity. He's the, wow. he's the David Beckham of Panama. He's a <laughs> centre back. And their goalkeeper Penido has been around a long time. I think he's got over 120 caps for Panama. Wow. And on Football Manager, when I was managing them, he saved two penalties for me. So, yeah, are those are the players that I know. Look out for them. <laughs> Look out for those. Obviously, Belgium we all know about. Oh yeah, because yeah. there's so many of their stars in in the English Premier about- League. What about any other groups then that you've uh, that you've done so far? You've I think you've done Senegal, have you? And yeah, was it Mexico, have you done? Or yes, have, have yeah, done, I've managed yeah. quite a few. Not done very well. I, I finished third with Senegal. Yeah, which is a bit of a miracle. I think they've, they've got a, a decent people, team, but yeah, a couple of people have pointed them out as possible dark horses because they they do they play the runner up. Or yeah, of, but they have England's Chico group. Chiate and you know any West Ham fan will tell you he just. I don't know what he does. He doesn't do anything. He's useless in midfield. Yeah. I'd rather play him as a centre back, to be honest. But they, they've got some good players, I must mm. admit. Um, so we'll see what they do. I think you're right in saying that we might play. If if yeah, I think we'd yeah, play I think them. I've pr- I've done a little prediction, and England end up playing Colombia. I think uh, in my little. Do you think England so. will finish second or? I think I think so. I can't I can't see them losing against Panama or Tunisia no. to, be, to be brutally I th- honest I think we'll go through I don't think it'll be like the last World Cup no we, uh, but then it, it does struggled. get tougher then straight away because Senegal although they're not amazing you know we've seen England in knockouts they've only won what two games in the last 28 mm. years or something like that in knockout football I so think if we get Colombia we'll go out if we get Senegal we'll go through. We, we could go through to the quarters yeah. on paper we should be going through to the quarters even though our team looks quite weak compared to previous times, yeah. I think that the the, um, the draw has been quite kind to England. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I do. Th- I think as well, if England had Oxlade Chamberlain rather than Loftus Cheek in the, that mm. midfield role, that they would do much better than they will actually I do. Like I, think they, they run... I don't think he's the weak link, though. No, <laughs> I think well, no, he's not a weak link, but I just think they would do better if they had yeah. Oxlade Chamberlain. I just think defensively, where. The years where we had so many strong, solid centre backs. Yeah. Like Carragher couldn't even get in the team. And yeah. now we're really <laughs> struggling to decide who we should play at the back. And we seem to want to play three centre backs, even though we don't really have three good enough centre backs. Yeah. Well, that, that are in the that, squad anyway. I kind of feel yeah. like the Newcastle you, and the, should have they're been not picking. Up. They're not going to pick players who play that for their clubs. So they're not no. used to playing. Like the centre of those three should like, be basically we, yeah, a sweeper. Yeah, why are we playing Kyle Walker at right centre back? He's not a centre back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like we are. Like there was a lot of talk, or not a lot of talk, but there was a few murmurings from Wolves fans this season that why not have a look at Connor Cody because he's played that centre of the three role all season hmm. and has been arguably the best or one of the best defenders in the championship. But they don't. Southgate just will not look outside of the top have six. You been, you've been playing three at the back. Yeah, we've played yeah. three at the back the whole uh, whole season, and he, he's played really well. But he said he will not pick anybody who is not shown that they can compete at the very top of the Premier League. Well, I you're limiting your that. choices then because you're not you're not picking players who are in form and yeah, doing like the good job. Obviously, have had a phenomenal season. All the players are in form. Yeah, they're on a high. Why can't you pick a player at the top of the championship? Especially when a lot of the players, like John Stones, for example, has hardly played any games for Man City. Yeah. Just yeah. because he's at a winning team, he's not really played, has he? No. Um, I kind of feel. I mean, I've always in the past been one for not calling up like seventeen, eighteen year olds that have only just had a breakthrough season. But I feel like with Ryan Sessegnon, mm. what a player he's been. I, I kind of feel like we're missing a trick there. I'd have called him yeah. up. I don't know whether he's been a bit cautious because of what happened. To yeah, I don't blame Walcott. him for not picking him because of people like Walcott in the past. Yeah, um, but. I don't know. I I feel like he'd have it in him. Yeah, he's he's it's, been the main pl- he's been the main star for Fulham. Theo Walcott wasn't the main star. No. For was he at Southampton or Arsenal when he was called up? Uh, uh, I think he's just he just he moved might to have Arsenal. Just moved to Arsenal. Yeah. Whereas Sessegnon's just been amazing. Yeah, I just think as well with England in the transitional period that they're in now, they've I think they've guaranteed Southgate that he will be in charge of the next tournament, regardless yeah. of what happens in this one. Why not throw a few of those in and yeah, just, exactly. just have a go? I'm glad because... he didn't call up Rooney or some of these older players yeah. that just aren't the future. Yeah, definitely. Although I don't think he should have called up Gary Cahill. 
I know I suppose, maybe you need experience at the back, but I don't know. I'd have risk. I don't think we're going to win this tournament, whatever. So I feel like yeah. we could have used this as building blocks and picked some younger players, like the Newcastle centre back. Um, uh, yeah, I, his name I, now. I can never pronounce it. That's a last. Oh, Lascelles. Yeah, Lascelles. Yeah, Lascelles. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd have called him up because uh, he's quite young and he's been really good. Mm. Yeah. Right. Let's move on then. So you're what you are most known for or famous or you could argue <laughs> uh, <so> famous but <laughs> <laughs> your football manager channel you've just celebrated your six years anniversary i watched yeah, that the other day it's crazy uh it's quite a long time and you you've almost admitted yourself that you in that time possibly should have had more subscribers you were saying because of the various uh, times out that you've had um yeah. not maybe not quite saying it that way but yeah, in in yeah, that I've never. It's not my job, for example. It's yeah. it's kind of a hobby that yeah, I use as my little business, but it's not my mm. um, career whatsoever. Oh. Uh, and maybe I could have pushed it more. Maybe I could have done more. But I've I guess I've had other priorities at times. Yeah. Sometimes this is my main priority, and other times it isn't. So <laughs> I just I th- it's fun for me. I don't want it yeah. to not be fun. So I've never pushed myself. Yeah. Like a lot of YouTubers out there will push themselves to to get really big and yeah. you know burn themselves out. And so I've always been wary of that. I think you've always been quite honest as well. Like I remember in the summer, I was watching all your videos at that point, and then you had three months or something yeah. without having any videos at all because i moved house yeah yeah so I yeah but there, but you but because you've created such a good community with your subscribers and stuff like you did a video then saying well this is where i've been and this is what i've done and and then you were back on it and it was uh it's good it, it does feel like a proper community yeah i try to be i I've, i know i can do better i know i can do better with community things and speaking to my my subscribers um and i'm always looking to improve yeah I, that's that's the way i am i always want to get better but I, and i know when i haven't been like i think recently i've been doing a heart save but i've kind of been on autopilot a bit yeah. uh but so I, I know i can do better i've enjoyed mm. i've enjoyed it and people have enjoyed it but i know i can I can do better so yeah yeah when football manager 2019 comes out i uh I'm, in my head right now i'm gonna like push really hard yeah, we never know what's around the corner. Do you? I never know what's around the corner. Though. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, everything's what... sort of major. Like I've just moved house last year, and mm. there's nothing in the pipeline that's absolutely massive in my life that could yeah. get in the way. But obviously, yeah. things change. You know, any, yeah, anything yeah. can happen. Can I just can I ask then? How do you go about choosing what what save you're going to put on uh, YouTube then? Because hearts. To me, is a, ran- a complete random one. <laughs> and before that, was it Portimonese or something like that? Uh, yeah, they both had reasons. So Hearts, I actually managed when I was 13 years old on Football Manager 2005. Right. And I really enjoyed it. So I kind of just felt like managing them again because I hadn't managed them <laughs> since then. Mm. And I, They're also, I mean, the re- Hearts, I think I picked Hearts when I was 13 because they had a very similar shirt to Chelmsford City which is right. my hometown team. So yeah. although I support West Ham, you know, I follow Chelmsford as well, just out of interest. Um, mm. So Hearts are the same. I think So that's why I think I originally picked Hearts. And then this time around, it was basically because I'd managed Hearts back then. I wanted to give them another go. Porto yeah. Manensi, I wanted to manage a team from outside of England where I'd been to that town. And right. when I was about 14, I went on a family holiday to Porto Manensi in Portugal. So that's right. why I picked them. Other other saves, are, sometimes it's random, but there's usually some sort of meaning behind yeah. why I pick. Because you have done one with Chelmsford, and you're taking them from yeah, the bottom 15. to the top. So that's obvious reasons, because I'm from Chelmsford. Yeah. So I picked Chelmsford. Obviously, I've done a few West Ham things in the past. Mm. Uh, my main series that I'm most proud of is, is a team that I created using the Creator Club thing yeah. on FM18, Regen Rovers. For those that don't know, Regen's uh, players that are created randomly on Football Manager, so young mm. players that are created to kind of make up for the fact that older players eventually retire. Yeah. So I created this team where I was only allowed to use these fake players and went from the Vanarama National League South all the way to the top. Yeah, and that's, it was amazing. Yeah, that's <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's the save I've been 
most proud of, and I will be doing that again on Football Manager yeah. 2019. In fact, I think this would be a perfect point. I sent you a clip, Paul, earlier yes. on. Could you just play that clip now, okay. please? Oh, the ball's back. That was really weird. 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds. Gordon, Sheriff, Mills, Young, DJ. God, in my freaking days. Dr. Jones. What? This is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. That is the best moment of football manager of my life. How? I mean, please blow the re the, the whistle now, ref. Uh, I'm not changing it. I mean, there. What? <laughs> Just t talk me through that moment because, uh, so, as somebody who's watched the the series, it looked as if well, it's ending now. And that's that's yeah, the end of it. it. Was, so it was episode eight of Regenerate. It was right at the start. It was the end of the first season, and I thought I was going to get relegated. And mm. literally, with the last kick of the season, <laughs> this player who'd not really done much for me all season scored a really well. Obviously, the goal that kept me up, and it was it was an amazing goal as well. It was really. It was like Barcelona football. We passed it around <laughs> wonderfully. We'd done nothing all season. Because it was a team of 16-year-olds. Yeah. They were all regens. Yeah. So they were all 16-year-old players that had formed right at the start of the game, these fake players. Mm. So I'd bought the best 16-year-olds I could find, and they were terrible. Looking at them, we were expected to get relegated from the Venerama National League South. And yeah. because I didn't have any extra databases installed, if we'd been sacked, if we'd got relegated, I'd have been sacked, and that would have been the end of the series. Yeah. But that goal kept us up, and I did 140 episodes in total. <laughs> and without that goal, it wouldn't have existed. Yeah. So. Well, I, my favourite bit is almost iconic. I think I've watched that video a couple of times now. It starts off with you saying, oh, the ball's back. Because yeah. there'd, gl yes. there'd been a glitch in the game where the ball yeah, had gone. the ball had just... Oh, football manager for you. The ball had just vanished. It was so strange. And then it just before that goal, it popped up again. Yeah, yeah. They were still playing. But it, yeah. I couldn't see the ball. It was bizarre. But then it popped up for that goal. Yeah, that was good. it. Was great. And as you said, you so you bringing it back now this year, or in the next game. Yeah, November. Is there anything you're going to do differently, or are you going to start at the bottom again and and go through? I'm going to ask what people want. Basically, I'm going to release a video in July, mm. and ask for opinions from people as to what they want to see. Yeah, there's, there's part of me. Options. There's part of me that wants you to start in the Premier League where you left off. But I just yeah. know if you did that with sixteen-year-olds, that you would de oh, yeah, you would yeah. definitely finish bottom. It'd have be to be done impossible. a different way. I did yeah. toy with the idea of just doing a, a small series on FM eighteen where I create the players using the editor, mm. and then and then like start from the Premier League. But I've decided against that. I'm, I, there's different ways I can do it. Yeah. If I'm if I'm nineteen, um, mm. so I'm just going to ask for opinions. Really, like. I feel like I do want to do it in England again, but if people want me to do it somewhere else, like Germany, mm. then I could. I just feel like England's got the more more scope. There's more leagues. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can install extra leagues from mm. databases yeah, that people make. So you could start even further down. I could start even. I could start in the level twelve of England. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm always a bit wary of using these databases though, because things there can be problems. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. That might be a bit too long winded. Starting at low down. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I just, I thought the whole idea. I I spoke to Dave Azapardi around about March last year, mm. and he and just saying how lucky you were to have had this idea, and then for that goal to have gone in and to carry on the series because it was <laughs> it such a massive. Impossible. Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange. But, but almost like the you had like a brand like because the people made you a shirt, didn't they? And, and yeah. the badges used to change and the kits used to change. I thought it was so clever. Such a really really good idea. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I sometimes surprise myself with ideas. I sometimes have ideas and I just don't know how to execute them Execute them or don't have the ability to execute them, I, I yeah. think. But I'm really pleased that one came good. Yeah. And yeah, someone got in touch with me through my Facebook page, actually, which I very, very rarely check. So I hardly go on Facebook, but mm. it messaged me. And then a month later, I'd noticed I'd got a message and it made me this shirt and he sent it to me, which was really nice. I did want to get shirts made. I didn't yeah. really have anywhere... I didn't really know where to go to get get that sorted without having to like order a load myself. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, but I think there are ways to do it now. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd so... have a regenerate of a shirt, I think. <laughs> Thank the you. next season. <laughs> I know Dr. Benji's recently released some Thames shirts. He's uh, right. doing yeah. a series with a team he's made up, and he's managed to get a company to to make yeah. shirts. So maybe that's the way to go next time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, just asking you again as well about football manager in general. Uh, where do you see the future of the game going? Hmm. One half of me worries about it because I feel like it gets more complex every year. I don't know if listeners will agree with me, but mm. there's probably people out there who are old enough to play championship manager, which is what I started on. But there's people that played championship manager, and it was relatively simplistic. Yeah. And I know of people that, after many years of not playing it, try and get into football manager, and they just find it too, too yeah. difficult, too too many buttons, too too much stuff. Yeah. So too I many worry screens. That, yeah. Like my, I don't know. Eventually, there'd be no new people, no teenagers starting to play it, right. and and it could go downhill. But the other half of me thinks there's there's a positive future. I I, I think one of the main problems is there's not really any major competitor. Mm. So there's no, if there's two companies making a similar game, you're competing against each other yeah. and you drive each other to get better and better and make innovative changes and yeah. maybe uh, crazy changes at times, but it can improve both games. Mm. Uh, but with Football Manager, there's no main competitor. There's like some little things like Soccer Manager on Steam, but yeah. they're not proper e- EA's, EA tried a version as well. Yeah, they, FIFA but... Manager. And you could yeah. argue that Football Manager was so good, it killed FIFA Manager off. So yeah, great, it it's a better game. But I kind of feel like maybe they need someone out there to, to drive them forward a bit. But I think they're doing some brilliant work. Mm. And I hope... I'm not sure how far you can take it. Like, how many changes can you make? Uh, well, that's uh, I think as well, though, because I used to buy the game every other year. So, like, yeah. 2009, uh, 11, and 13... And then fifteen, um, but really since fifteen, I haven't. I've only played the two thousand thirteen version, and yeah. because I've gone so deep in that game now, I'm like in fifty years in the future. Hmm. I, I'm still playing it now, five years after starting the save, because I just yeah. love it so much. And now I've tried to play uh, two thousand eighteen, and it just doesn't. doesn't I don't know. It, it no, it hasn't really at- attracted me to it because I don't know. They they have made it. It's almost as if it was perfect. But they've they've had to make changes to they've it to make, to make people they've had, had to, to add buy it again. Things, yeah, I agree in some way. Like I feel like the golden <clears> age for me, and I don't know whether this is because I was at university at the time, but FM eleven, FM twelve, and thirteen. Yeah, well, that was the golden age for me. I loved those games. I had yeah. so much fun. But it was kind of before I did YouTube. So I think with Football Manager for me now is almost like a tool to making yeah. videos, and I enjoy yeah. it. But I don't necessarily play my own personal saves. I don't have time to do that. But, but so yeah, I I find it interesting speaking to someone like you who plays the game casually, yeah. Because uh, you're the ones that actually play it, yeah. As a a game where I play it as a game, but because I'm making content, YouTube content, it's kind of difficult to see it from a normal player's perspective. I suppose. Yeah. It's um, yeah, and just because I'm attached to this this yeah. one save now as well. I think like, that's the biggest thing, though. Like when people say, "What's their favorite game?" It's the game which they had the the yeah. save that went the furthest, or which they connected with, or they had a regen that they connected with. Yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily the actual game. It's the save that makes a game yes, amazing. Like it's just luck of the draw. Whether you come across a a save that draws you in and gets you addicted. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely uh, similarities in our stories because I think I was at university at the same time as you. Then so eleven, twelve, and thirteen. And when people ask me, what did you do at university? I say, <laughs> I say, well, I played football manager. <laughs> it's funny when people tweet me and they say, oh, I'm going off to uni now. I don't have time to play football manager. What are you talking about? That's when you play football manager the most. Yeah. I never had more time to a, play football manager. Yeah, I played a season in a day. Yeah. I remember going down for breakfast in the, in the cafeteria in the first year. And they said, oh, what are we going to do today? I said, oh, I'll probably try and play a whole season and yeah. and just staying there until midnight and getting it I, done. I used Amazing. to play a network game with another person called Tom actually who's my yeah. uh, best friend who actually I set up um, he helped me with Golden FM in the early days on Twitter when I first set it up but we used to just play um, the, this network game all night on Skype and we'd have like these 11 hour calls 
<laughs> and we just played football manager the whole time. It was just so sad, but yeah. All, we used to uh, in in university when the games used to come out. We used to get our suits on, get yeah. the laptops all in the same room, and then we and then we used to play for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> and but that that was the that's what the games for for me. Yeah, is just you know playing with with your friends and talking about the players and and recommending players yeah. to each other and stuff like that. Is, well, that I did that at school. Really, really fun. I can yeah. remember there was a few of us that played football manager in school. I think it was like year 10 or something. And someone had found Pablo Piatti on FM 08. And he mm. came in and told us about it. And everyone went home and bought Pablo Piatti. And everyone, he was incredible. What a player. <laughs> still still love him. Who's, who's the best player that you found on football manager and then has become, in real life, ah. has become a really good player? You think uh, of any oh, um, there's a couple. Vincent Company. Right. Uh, Arturo Vidal. Mm. Definitely. So these are all players I had at Arsenal, actually. Yeah. <laughs> on, on an Arsenal save back in the day. Yeah. They probably had um, a trial in real life at Arsenal. They, but then my front get... two, though, were, was actually Nicholas Bentner and Carlos Villa. <laughs> and they, they were incredible. They both scored 50 goals each in one season. I went unbeaten two years in a row with Arsenal. Jeez. This was FM08. Yeah, it's so a ten years ago, but those two were lethal up front. And my I, my back four, I had Vincent Company, and I had Van uh, Van den Boer, the Belgian right back. Mm. He was yeah. insane, and Arturo Vidal in there. Pablo Pietti, I've already mentioned. He, Pablo mm. Pietti's a decent player in real life, actually, but he's not quite gone on to what he managed to achieve on FMO eight. Yeah, uh, is there anybody in the game that you're playing at the moment as a youngster? Oh, right or... now, I haven't really yeah. on FMO eight. I haven't really gone far enough in to be honest. Right. Um, yeah, I haven't really played those sorts of saves to know because yeah. I've managed Porto Manense and Hearts, and those have been my two saves where I've gone the furthest, and I've only gone four seasons in. So, yeah. um, an FM seventeen, I've managed Regen Rovers and only met, had fake players. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit of I'm a bit out touch of the current Wonder Kids. Yeah, They're, I know of a few that are very good. Yeah. Uh, oh, the obvious is Ryan Sessegnon, I suppose. Mm. Mm. Um, who else turns out good? There's not really anyone that's completely unknown, I don't think, now. I think that's the thing with social media. All these things get out so quickly. And you yeah. find out about the, the 14-year-old that Barcelona have signed <laughs> <laughs> and is going to be the next big thing. Yeah. Like Udegaard, for example, at 15 oh, after yeah. Real Madrid. He, did, still, did he you, still turns out amazing. Did you do an experiment about Udegaard? Did yeah, you... a couple of years ago I just sort of holidayed into the future to see how he got on and he did very well he still turns into a really good player on yeah. FM18 still really young so yeah I, st- I think he can still go quite far mm. it seems as if this year as well you've got, you've moved away almost from experiments you, you haven't done as many uh, I know you did you did the yeah. world cup ones and you were generating it a thousand yeah. times <laughs> but I did, uh, someone, I did some in December yeah I haven't I, I used to do loads back on FM15 and 16 yeah but not so many in the last couple of years. Yeah, but they they were what drew me into your channel with, yeah. the, with those ones, particularly the the Scandinavian one or the Nordic yeah. nations. Yeah, can, can the Nordic nations dominate world football? Yeah, because they did do really well, didn't they? I can't yeah. remember exactly how many World Cup wins you they had, but you see, loads, but... yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was good. Fun. So, how do you come? How do you come up with those experiments? Is it recommendations from fans or subscribers or? A uh, mixture, what? to be, yeah. There's been a few that people suggested. Mm. Most of them have been just things that have popped into my head. I think I'm just trying to think up ideas that I can do with the editor, yeah. football manager editor, and yeah, I pff, sound a bit arrogant saying it like that, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm quite imaginative, natu- yeah. natu- naturally imaginative, which is why I like YouTube because it gives me a creative outlet that nothing else really does in my life. Yeah. So, I because I set I started football manager experiments on YouTube, mm. and I just wrote a list out back yeah. five years ago and worked my way down. And sometimes things just pop into my head randomly. Other things have been suggested by people, or I uh, use that suggestion and expand on it and change it yeah. slightly. So yeah. yeah, it's a mixture really. Yeah, I think I still find them entertaining now. I'll Thank go you. back and. There's, and there's loads of other people doing it now. There's yeah, uh, Jen Caldo, for example, Tom FM. If people want to check mm. those guys out if they're interested in Football Manager. They make mm. interesting experiments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, 
let's go back to just briefly talk about your YouTube channel. Uh, where do you see football manager YouTubers? Where do you see that going on on YouTube? I actually was thinking about this earlier. Because I've been, I've seen a lot of people over the last few months complaining about FIFA. Mm. Back oh, on, yes. uh, well, 2012-13, when like, FIFA became massive, mm. you know, KSI became KSI, and what he yeah. is now because of uploading some funny FIFA videos, it was huge. And now it's kind of, I see a lot. I think it's because it it's not saturated. There's so many people making FIFA videos, but mm. it's just become quite samey. Yeah, um, so it is many. limited. Yeah, it's, it's limited, limited. Yeah, I mean, Fortnite's such a big thing on YouTube and Twitch yeah. now. Like that's kind of overtaken everything. But yeah. FIFA was big. But FIFA's been big for a few years, and it still is big. But it's and it's certainly bigger than Football Manager. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, like, there's a lot of people complaining about about it. Maybe people will migrate over to Football Manager. Mm. Um, I I kind of feel like there's more scope for story driven stuff. Like, oh, definitely. Um. Obviously, I'm biased, <laughs> but, no, but it's, there's certainly are, been more right. creators yeah. come yeah. about. Like when I first started, there was a few, and most of the ones that were around when I first started have stopped making content now as they've got older. Mm. But there's there's loads now, and obviously, Doctor Benji is probably the the biggest one around at the moment. Mm. And Work the Space has always been big since I started, and there's a few others, Loki Doki, Lelujo, who've there's a few. There's I think there's three people now that have basically made it their job which wow. is incredible it's not not for me i've I've not pushed it that hard but no. there's three people out there that are actually you know trying to make it make make a living from it which i just find incredible really that people can make a living from playing football manager yeah well, it, well yeah i tried <laughs> myself a couple of times to to start a little series when i first started youtube but it just took so much work for me anyway if you, once you get into it i imagine it's much easier but just having to play a game and then it, go and watch it again and edit it and think oh, I, just, I wasn't that entertaining commentating or stuff yeah. like that but and then playing the actual save then and thinking oh do you know what i should be recording this game this is quite a big game <laughs> oh that's the dilemma that's yeah. that's the most that was the most frustrating thing for me and that's why i've gone into other avenues yeah. on youtube uh, so, well, do do you ever get that? Do you ever think, oh, do you know what? I just really want to play this game and not record. Yeah, I do sometimes. I kind of, I do sometimes. Like I was alluding to earlier, I do sometimes miss the days where I just played football when I just enjoyed it. Yeah, but I mean, I still enjoy it, but it's not quite the same. It's kind of why I did a series of West Ham last year, and I only did a video at the end of each season. Yeah, but that really. I really enjoyed that save, and I actually went got through it a lot quicker because it's it's time consuming, recording, and yeah. then editing and then uploading. Yeah. It's not just playing the game, you know. You, no. you play sort of four or five games behind the scenes, and then you record two matches, you've got to, and then you've got to go back through yeah. and talk talk through all the games that the viewers have missed. Yeah, and it's kind of you, you, it's very uh, stilted trying to play, but. Um, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't make videos if I didn't enjoy it. So I obviously yeah. do enjoy it, but I sometimes do miss uh just playing the game. I yeah. don't have a I don't have time for a, just a personal save, which is mm. why I did that West Ham series last year really because yeah. it's a mixture of the two. I was only making one video per season, so it was a lot quicker. Yeah. Where do you see your channel going in, in the next 5 10 years or so? Uh I, I I have high hopes for FM19 with Regen Rovers. Yeah. I hope that can take it to the next level. Uh, I mean, the, I suppose, I'm not going to lie, the dream would be to make it a career. Mm. I don't know if I'm the sort of person that could do that, though. Uh, so, yeah, I still sometimes doubt myself, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> we all have weaknesses, don't we? I sometimes yeah. doubt myself as to whether I'm good enough to do that. I, but... I genuinely think, with the, particularly with the Regen Rovers thing, if, the, if that catches on again next time you've definitely got like a worthwhile brand and people and yeah some of the people will so. follow i hope so like maybe I, I really enjoyed it on fm18 it's a mm. slight missed opportunity i didn't make it bigger but just personal life got in the way of yeah moving house which is bigger at that time yeah um but i, th I almost see that as a pilot i see that as practice i'm hoping right. so anyway i'm hoping that's just like a, a practice and just a snapshot of what's to come because yeah. i think it can be my Unique selling point. Yeah, Regen Rovers. 
We'll is see. there any, we'll see. W- what about other things on YouTube? I know you've you've had a second channel, but you you haven't really used that have no. you, for the last few years or so. Is vlogging and stuff like that is anything like that? Catch yeah, you, vlogging is not really my style. I don't think. Yeah, Did I? it's very 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 different isn't it, when it's you take your camera different. outside. I don't of... think no. I I did do a couple of vlogs, I suppose, on my second channel back in the day, but I literally did it. I was in Chelmsford late mm. at night in a car park where no one was around, <laughs> and also near near my parents' house in in the woods. <laughs> Just walking <laughs> with no one shady, around. These, uh... <laughs> Somewhere where there was no one around. <laughs> but I can't I can't imagine just sort of walking through. No. I saw people in. Um, I was in London on Saturday, and I just went. We went over Tower Bridge, and there was a couple of people going across it, sort of speaking to themselves on a the camera. And I just, I yeah. can't see myself doing that. I don't have no, the confidence. Be, I don't think. No. I've just been watching Spencer, who I know you you quite like as well, yeah. don't you? And just go, going to a football match and putting talking to a camera. I know that lots of people get lots of stick about it. Dave has a party uh, in about Easter time. Wolves played Cardiff and there was two penalties in the last minute that oh, yeah, both were that missed. Idea, yeah. And he filmed himself and he got so much stick from people saying, why aren't you just watching the game? We think, well, yeah. he's doing his job as well. That you know, it's Sharing really, really experiences difficult. experiences with others. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a brave thing to do because you, all you have to have is one person behind you that just doesn't get what you're doing and then could just yeah. give you grief for the whole game. Like you sometimes yeah. see people's looks in these uh, football vlogs and there's just someone yeah. sort of looking a bit strange. And yeah, yeah. It, it reminds me of actually, I went to a football match back in university with my friend Tom and mm. we just decided to do some random selfies. We, we, watched, we went to a random match, it was Bournemouth versus Huddersfield. And strangely mm. enough, both teams were in League One at the time, how times right. have changed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was this guy behind us who ended up just in every single picture. He was pretending to pick his nose. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. yeah, reminded me of that. But yeah, it, it's a brave thing to do vlogging, especially yeah. if not everyone gets it. Yeah, I, I get it completely, but I just I don't. I'm not brave enough to do it myself. Yeah, <laughs> I also think no nobody can be that interested in my life <laughs> or my what I can see at a football match. Like I'll talk about it after the game, and I'll tell yeah. you perfectly you know find what i thought of the game i don't need to do it during the game i don't think yeah but other people everyone's different everyone has different yeah. skills and yes. different ways to do it don't they so yeah but i mean i'm really like away days yeah he's, he's good yeah. he's, he's really good because he goes around different grounds and he yeah. seems quite natural at doing that yeah but other i've people... seen a lot of over the last or this weekend various youtubers going to all the playoff finals and and yeah. really cashing in <laughs> really because yeah, they're able to get tickets as well because it's not you know league two and league one player oh, yeah. finals it's not not a sellout so yeah yeah right i'm gonna finish then paul with a bit of a quiz Ooh. now with uh the other people i'm gonna have on they're gonna try and name the one to eleven from a particular football match that is big for their club so uh but for okay. you I've chosen something slightly different. Now, we've spoken about this game earlier on. Oh, no. Regen Rovers. Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, Regen Rovers against Dartford. It was up- <laughs> uploaded on the 4th Brilliant. of November 2016. Can you name the starting <sighs> 11 from no. that game? I can't do subs on, I'm afraid. I've, I've just got the starting oh, 11. Oh, okay. So, Dr. James might not have started. Oh. I don't know. I think Grant War played a goal. He did, correct. Oh. Who's the back four? Who is the back four? <laughs> ah, Dion Mills in central midfield. Yeah, he did Jack play. Jack Young. Yeah, obviously. Dr. Jones, great. did he start? He didn't start. He didn't no, start. He, was, okay. he came so off the bench. Do I lose a point for that then? Uh, well, yeah. It's, a bit, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, very, a very loose quiz. <laughs> oh, I can't remember anyone else. That's really bad. All the players I can remember, sort of from more, the more recent seasons, I've, I've remembered the ones. Well, those are the main guys from the, the early days. They pl- they played for quite a few seasons. And how they... many have I got? Three. You got three so far. Grant War, Dion Mills, and Jack Young. Yeah. One of these I remember you saying quite a lot. A winger. Is it the left winger? Yes, it is the oh, left. What's winger. his name? He had a great name, and I've forgotten it. I've it sounds like it could head. be a brand of beer. Yeah, I know. I've, I've forgotten his name off the top of my head. This sounds really bad. I should really go and re-watch my series. The problem is, I just get my, my brain gets saturated with all my other series and all these yeah. other players and yeah. all these other players. I mean, I must have had, I don't know, 150 different players at Regen Rovers oh, in the yeah. first team, easily. 
So to actually go back and I'm, I, all that's coming into my head is Wesley Fodringham, the Rangers goalkeeper, because it's similar. <laughs> it's kind of that like similar, t- similar name. Yeah, it's really what similar. What's my back four? Should to... I give you some initials? See if you can guess them from well, the initials. I, I might be able to guess from initials. All right, your right back initials J Y. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Who else? Uh, two centre backs. Uh, one is I O, and oh, the other is L S. I, I can picture him. I can picture his regen face. <laughs> oh, I've forgotten his name. Who's the left back? The left back W C. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't help either. <laughs> Water Who's the left winger then? Left winger Alfie Doddington. Ah, Doddington. I love that guy. Yeah. yeah. I should really remember these. Should I go through the rest of the team for you? Yes, please. Right, you've got Grant Moore in goal. Joshua Yaidom. Oh, Yaidom. Yaidom, yeah. I got, I got him from, I swear, I think I got him from Yeovil or somewhere. <laughs> Idris Olakuni. Yeah. I will Liam, Simmons. Liam Simmons. And, Liam Simmons. And Will Sim- Carter. I can't even remember Will Carter, really. Uh, well, he played in this very <laughs> yeah, significant game. Yeah, he played game. in that very significant game. <laughs> uh, in defensive midfield, you've got Gareth Sheriff. Oh, I should have remembered him. I had a chant for him. <laughs> uh, centre mid uh, Dion Mills right yeah. wing uh, Leon Thompson ah uh, yes yeah A- attacking mid Joe Gordon Leon then... Thompson was the only player to like feature in the first team that came through the youth system I think oh well yeah well, Joe and then Gordon got... yeah Joe Gordon Joe Gordon Jack Young Alfie Doddington finishing off and then of course if you ever watched the series Dr Jones Scores the, the famous goal. Gareth Sheriff. Why was he I called should... Dr. Jones then? Because uh, he wasn't, wasn't actually called that. I had two players with the last name Jones, and one started right. with D, so I called him Dr. Jones because of this Aqua song. <laughs> Dr. Jones. <laughs> a bit weird, I know, but I think that's uh, that. What that uh, a lot of football managers, YouTubers do this. They nickname players, yeah, and it just yeah. gives you that attachment to the player even more so, especially yeah. the ones you nickname or or ones you can't pronounce. Yeah. So you just nickname them yeah. something you can pronounce. Yeah. But I should have done better at that. I apologise uh, well, to anyone I listening. I, it was it's pre- heresy. It was, <laughs> it was a pretty tough one. I did I did a podcast this morning with somebody who's a Chelsea fan and they had to name Chelsea Man United players. I think it's probably easier for any football fan than doing a Regen Rovers team, even yeah. if it was... Even if you are talking to the manager. I'm myself for Gareth Sheriff and Doddington, though. I, I literally knew Doddington. It was just I couldn't... Get the actual word. It was. It's yeah. just, oh. yeah, there I'll we go. go. I failed. Yeah, right. Anyway, Paul, thank you very much for coming on for this first episode. You, very enjoyable. Uh, don't forget to check out Golden FM. I'll put a link in the description thank or you. wherever it goes on iTunes. I'm not sure, but uh, search for Golden FM on YouTube, and you'll find him there. Thank, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. thank you, Paul. I'll see you again next time. <laughs>